You're about to listen to Pastor Bidimi Makmodi of the Well Oasis International. It shall not work. But some of us is our circumstances. Say, yeah, man, I know the word of God said, but have I told not told you that when you are talking to me about God, at least when you're talking to me, Bidimi Makmodi, don't use the word but. They don't go. God and but don't go in the same sentence. Because but negates everything you said before. So please, when you are talking to me, I don't care what the situation is. And that's not because I'm callous. Don't use but. Find another word. Because once you say, I believe, but what did you just say? I don't believe. When you say, the word of God says, hey, I know the word of God says that healing is the bread of children. Uh, however, or but, what are you saying? I'm not a children. So maybe it will work for this set of people. I don't think it will work for me. You can't allow your emotions. You can't allow your logic. You can't allow your circumstances be the authority based on which you transact with God, you will fall flat on your face. It makes sense, yes? God most of the time doesn't make sense. Yeah. Jesus did not ask him, what did your pastor say? Jesus did not even say, what did God say? It's tricky. Jesus did not say, what do you think I want to say to you now? Jesus did not say, what do you think God said? He said, what is written? That is, open the book. Before you talk to me, open the book. Before you answer the next question, open the book. Open the book. Open the book. What is written? Jesus was saying that records prove what God has said about the subject matter. So if you want to know what the answer is, go check what records say about what God has said already. God does not repeat himself. He does not need to repeat himself. God does not change his mind. God's English is very correct every time. Even when he said, I'm hungered. It was good English, anointed English. So there's nothing like, okay, let me figure it out. You can't figure out God. Just read what his word says. All scripture is God breathed. And God breathed upon man and man became what? A living soul. So essentially, scripture is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. If we agree that God's word is the breath of God, and a man without breath, and many of us can live without breath for 10 minutes. How long can a man go without breathing? Eh? They said for very good seals, naval seals, they said maybe six minutes, max. After that, you are dead, dead, die. Now that is in the physical. Now if the word of God is the breath of God, and you have not opened this since December, <laughs> are you still alive? Don't die, don't say. <laughs> now your daddy body. <laughs> now the workers, so now you don't know. Praise Jesus. If you look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, it says, My son, forget not my law. But let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. How many things do we see? You want peace? Look at the word of God. You want long life? Look at the word of God. You want length of days? Look at the word of God. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22, it says, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them and they are health to all their flesh. Those days, according to Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 6 to 8, this is what used to happen. They would write the scriptures and then they would put it in their homes. They would put it at eye level, not up. That's why they said the doorpost, somewhere that the eye can always see it. The idea is as you go around, you must see what the word of God says. You must see what the word of God says. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 6, from verse 6 to 8, even talks about putting it on your forehead. The way you put it on your forehead is not for your benefit. It's for the benefit of the one that you will be talking to. So they are talking to you, but they are seeing what God has said. The idea in those days was you cannot go around without having the word of God before you. You must have the word of God before you because it is the decided or he is the decider of every faith. So it was written, if this were, you know, a Jewish home, everywhere you can see it. Any wall you look like, there is a scripture inscribed there. So you are surrounded by the word of God. Whether you open the scroll or not, you can see the word of God, what it says. Praise Jesus. But let us see whether Jesus understood what it meant or what it meant for word to be written. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11, you see the famous temptation of Jesus Christ. It's amazing that the word of God was tempted and the word of God could have just spoken. But the word of God decided to use it is written. Three times the devil came. 
Three times Jesus said to him, it is written. Number two is a tricky one. In number two, he said, Matthew chapter four, in verse number six, Matthew chapter four from verse number six, he says, and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written. Who is using it is written here. Matthew chapter 4 verse 6. Who was using it is written here? Eh? The devil is using it is written. You, I can't remember the day you used it is written. See your life. The devil said it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. The problem is that the devil was quoting Psalm 91. So he was quoting from scripture. And so if you have not read your it is written, (laughs) you will not know that the devil missed something here. Go with me to Psalm 91 verse number 11. Psalm 91 verse 11. Let me read what the devil said again. He said, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. In Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 that the devil was quoting. This is what the Bible says. It said, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So if Jesus didn't know what was written, the devil would have got there and said, yes, that was God. God said, let me jump through through. But you see, what the devil omitted was that in the word of God, it was very clear. That he will give his angels charge over you where they lead you to. So if they did not lead you to jump, they are not on duty when you jump. It is written. So Jesus responded to him and said, it is written again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus would have said, how dare you? In fact, from today, let your tail no, not God. Let it just be stuck to your nose. Which will give you a really bad man good whatever. So you won't be able to do the work of devil again. But Jesus took a look at him and said, It is written. In Isaiah, God said, Concerning the work of my hand, command ye me. I ask you again, on what authority are you standing? Some of us, your prayers make me laugh. Say, devil, I they tell you, leave me alone, no. Devil, you they find my job will come off for here. Oh. Devil, take your time. Oh, you never hear say, I say, no, you come off for road. Oh, no, man. You go take for bus stop. The only language that can disperse the devil is the word of God. So you must turn and say, according to the word that is written. You said you that shall never. The psalmist says that, you know, since he is born, now he's old. He has never said the righteous forsaken. Nor his children beg for bread. Therefore, it is written. He says, that is knocking at your door. He says, have you not heard? It is written. I and the children that God has given to me, where I joy and a wonder and eternal excellency, a joy unto many generations. With long life, he shall satisfy me. It is written. He says, this grace is the end of you. Say, so have you not heard that it is written that where I have received shame, he shall give me double for honor. It is written. Now, assuming you are wondering why is it is written so important? Because Psalm 119 verse 89 is clear. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It is settled. So the only thing that can shut him up is what is written. Guys, it is not the blog from another man's experience. Guys, it is not the seven prayers that another man distilled for their situation. Even if a prayer, when people will call prayer point, I they call prayer, other people prayer meeting, they, they call prayer. Once they call prayer point, my, especially when they call those ones, I don't understand. It is written, is what I begin to say. It is written. 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 I must know. I, I must have a word that I can answer you. My husband went to court one day and it was a contentious matter. And in the 
passion with which he was um, talking, the judge took a look at him and said, Mr. Modi, take it easy. This is how people have a heart attack and they die. And my husband said, he just put his leg down. He said, it is written that with long life, he shall satisfy me. He shall satisfy my mouth with good things. I wait upon the Lord. Therefore, my strength is renewed like the eagles. He said he was in the, he said, but you don't forget lawyer work. He just was doing it. Because somebody just spoke something into the atmosphere. He said, when he was satisfied that his, his, his written was enough, he kept quiet. And he was, the man couldn't say anything because every devil will bow to it is written. The Bible says that God is honored his word above his name. I have said it before and I want to say it again. And it will sound heretic to those who don't understand. There are some things that you can say in the name of Jesus from here to tomorrow. They won't move. But if you can find it is written, they live like, <laughs> ah, We'll soon do a pressure to your Bible. Because when it is written, you will mark it. You will underline it. You will write at the edges. You will, if you say, my husband has a Bible, the same scripture, he has written around the same scripture with four different inks. If he wrote with black the last time, when a new revelation comes, we'll take the red. When I look at the Bible, I'm like, I can never borrow your Bible. And he said, that is the idea. You go make your own. It is written. There is a word for every single thing that you would ever face. But do you know where to find it? You don't know now. Those days, Christians used to be, used to be, you will not just know where it is written, you will memorize it. It used to be an assignment weekly at home. Memorize this number of scripture. Now we are just too grateful that the children came to church. Memorize skinny. It's a testimony that a child you pay house rent over. You feed them, you clothe them. You pay their school fees. It is a testimony that they came to church. See our life. We are the well. We want to continue this journey with you. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Well Reveals. Worship with us every Sunday at 7B Iche Chris on Yekulaje Street off Abikeani Mao Street, Lekki Phase 1 Lagos. Time, 4.30 p.m. We are the well. An oasis for revival, refreshing, and revealing. And this child is not 30 years yet because, I mean, why should you pay rent for 30 year old picking? Well, that will not be picking again now. They are talking of teenagers that you are responsible for from start to finish. It's a praise God. Oh, my daughter, my son, my daughter came to church. And I'm thinking, this picking, who is the parent? You can't bring them to church. The data must not finish at home. God forbid that you tell them to memorize scripture. They know everything that was those, what are those people called? Where's Joshua? That they put out. Those people that you people that keep telling you people that they are Muslim people. What, what do those, those people, those people, those people, those cartoon people, Disney, I be all those people. They know everything from the, the one that they put out when their father was born. They know it. They know the year was put out. If you got something from there wrong, they can tell you that it is wrong. Even this afternoon, we've had a conversation. The Mandela effect. And I'm like, hey, what's on here? They tell them, what does the Bible say? The righteous ass. Oh, mom. I have the, the Bible on my phone. Do I need to carry it? I'm too busy trying to read. God no God allow devil slap our children on. Guys, it is written. That is the only language that he understands. It is written. Before you call someone, it's sweeter when, when you call someone to pray with you. And you say today, I have done this thing. I have talked to God about it. I have looked at the scripture. You know, I have a sister that is going through right now. And one of the reasons I'm so sure she's landing on the other side is when she called me, she said, Auntie B, this is what has happened. But wait, I'm coming. She took like three weeks. Then when she came back, I woke up one morning and she had sent me her articulated stand on this matter. She said, this is the word of God I'm standing on. I just need you to stand on this word with me. To the extent that for treatment, she found a scripture that said she will not use her money to pay for treatment. And she said, I'm standing on this word though. Guess what? She's in their abroad taking treatment. People paid for her treatment and they're still paying. 
Last week, she was still giving me a testimony. She was supposed to be doing chemo and they, they, she found somewhere they were supposed to be doing chemo for 3,000. Then one of the Cyruses in the place took up the phone and started to call and call and call. Eventually, they found someone who would come and do the chemo at home and for cheaper. So, of course, she took that option. But they will first of all bring a machine and keep it in the house. And then weekly, every time they come for the chemo session, she will pay a certain amount. When they, she, did, she did the calculation, she said to the woman, she said, it's too, too expensive. What can we do? Because it was a charity, they got on the phone again by themselves. They called and called. They said, you know what? We will bring the machine for free. Just pay your weekly sessions. Why? Because she had finished the work. Her problem, when the thing hit, it was not God, why me? Because sometimes you are too focused on why me. That you forget that there is something, there is an authority that you have over this situation. She sat with God, she dealt with it. So we know without a matter of, it's not even a conversation. We know when she gets back on the other side, she'll be ready for whatever. So it, it wasn't that one that is sent you, when you see their call coming, your heart will be cutting. There's nothing for her to cut because she has sat with God. She has found out what is written. She has articulated it. She had understood it. She has reproduced it in her words. And she has placed it everywhere in the room where she lives. She said, when my nephew entered the room, he looked at the room and he could not recognize the room. Because I put the word of God on every inch of the wall. Everything that God told me, I wrote it out and I pasted it. And I am standing on this. Just stand on these things with me. That is the one that fights and God will just be like, see, can you see how they fight? Can you see how they fight? If I tell you that battles come upon us, because God knows that we are generalissimos and we can get take it. Will I be sounding like I'm inviting something? The reason why we chicken out is because we don't do our homework. It is written. It's not the one that your pastor will help you do. It is written. It's not the one that your parents will help you do. It is written. It's your friend can love you, but they can't help you. Your husband can't help you. Your wife can't help you. You get to a place and you realize that the only thing that is in front of me now is God. And whatever I do with God in this moment will determine how far I will go. What is written about your situation? Articulate this question for yourself. I want to close by sharing with you Ezekiel chapter 37. Incidentally, that's my scripture for this year. If you read the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 10. The prophet showed up and God said to look in the valley of dry bones. And God said to him, son of man, can these bones live? And the guy said, Lord, thou knowest. That is code for, I don't know. They don't look like. Because this was not a valley of skeletons. This was a valley of bones. That is, there were so many bones. You don't know which ones were Mr. A's bone completely or which ones were Miss B's bones. They were just a dumping of bones. And he, God told him, he said, do you think they can live? Maybe if it was a valley of skeletons, we could have said, mm, I think so. But that wasn't what it was. So he said, Lord, I, I don't know. That was code of, mm -hmm. in fact, I can't commit myself on this matter. That was what the code was. And God said to him, prophesy. I want to show you something. If we tie to the fact that the word of God is the breath of God, you will quickly see what I'm saying today. For you to understand that what happened in the valley where those bones became a mighty army had everything to do with the word of God. Praise Jesus. In Ezekiel 37 from verse number, and he said, verse 3, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Look at your verse number 5. First saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold what will happen. I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Do you notice that he didn't stand there trying to do deliverance for the bones? He stood there and God gave him specific instructions. He said prophesy. Then God told him what to prophesy. It is written. So he started to speak what he could hear God say. He said, I will put breath in you and you will live. Did you see that? And I will lay sinews upon you. And I will bring flesh upon you. And cover you with skin. And put breath in you. And you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So prophesied I as I was commanded. And as I prophesied there was what? A noise. And behold a shaking. 
and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above. Look at what is next. But there was no breath. Verse number nine. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. What did I say that the breath of God is? The spirit of God. But what he was actually saying was prophesied by the spirit. Son of man and say to the spirit. Thus saith the Lord God. Come from the four winds. O breath. O spirit. Numa. O ruach. And breathe upon this slave that they may live. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came unto them. And they lived and they stood upon their feet. An exceeding great army. Hello. What makes you a great army is not anything else but the word of God as breathed by the spirit of God. What makes you the army that cannot be defeated? How many of us saw that helicopter that crashed yesterday? How many of us know that flesh and blood did not do that? That is the work of God. That's what only God can do. And they came out and they continued on what they were doing. They did not even say, let's check out first whether, guys, we are shouting, there are no miracles anymore, but there are still miracles happening every single day. Why? Because the Bible says they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The question is, how do you know a God that you do not know his mind? The word of God is the mind of God. So this time, I beg you, read it for yourself. Maybe not know verse. They have told you people that electronic Bibles don't make sense to me. You can't write on them. And most of us don't use the same journal every Sunday. So what you have learned in the last one year in different scraps of paper in different places. Imagine that you are reading it on your Bible. This is a new Bible I bought. I've started. Write on your Bible. As you are reading it and you are articulating it, write it in your own. There is a scripture that I don't care what anybody says. That scripture, if I die, you wake me. I know it's in the talk. Because it has become flesh to me. How do you think people get miracles? It's not every miracle until they lay handkerchief on you. That's why they are laying demonized things on you. You went for healing. You came back with another thing. They cast out one demon. 27 came in. What are we doing? Want something you can sit down in your house with this word and get it done by yourself between you, the God of heaven and the spirit of God. You're running from pillar to post. Why? Because we are all shallow now. You won't read the scripture for yourself. Even if you will read this, the Rohini Shoki, this briefest of it, what is the shortest chapter I can read today? How many of us have done that before? I've done it before. I will start. I said, this chapter too long, I beg. Which one short? <laughs> Thank you. It's too long. When I give me short one, again, in Jesus' name, what it will make you pray seven hours, make it not happen to you. What? is written. How many of us have unresolved situations in this room? How many of us? How many of us know what the word of God says concerning that situation? How many of us are standing on that word? It is like holding on to this thing. Jacob said, if you don't bless me, I'm not going. When that word becomes flesh and you put it there, say, God, I don't hear. I've heard it before. I've read it. My eyes have seen it. So you know they change your mind. You said this thing. If I will be the last person you will do it for, you shall do it for me. You are bound by your word. That's what the Bible says. You need to wake up. When you come to me who's not feeling your pain and you expect me to pray with you with the kind of zest that you can pray for yourself, are you not making a big mistake? You're making a big mistake. If you join commanding your money, don't you see that I'm praying for myself? Especially when it reach, it gets to those uh, declarations. Do you see, do you hear me call your name? You think me, I don't want to make it. <laughs> the idea is you to begin to call your name. Guys, no one can carry us on this journey. If our fathers and the Lord could carry us, they would have carried us. They really love us, but they can't. This is the place where you find your path by yourself. You find your path, you catch your course, you determine your pace by yourself. I want you to stand on your feet and let's see some example of it is written this afternoon. What is written that you know? What is written that you know? I'm not going to be praying. 
I want to hear you. What is written that you know? What is written that you know? In this 2019, what is written that you know? The word God gave me was consolidate. The scripture is Ezekiel chapter 37. The scripture we just read. God said to me, every dead bone in this valley, I will put my breath upon it, sinew. Bone will find bone. I will cover with flesh. And I will breathe upon them and they will become lively. So I stood on that scripture. And then we continue to tell the devil it is written. Duke Air Radio will work because God had told me that every dry bone in this valley that's been to begins to receive life. In the name of Jesus, a faith tribe receives a revival. Because the word of God tells me it is written. I will put flesh upon these bones. I will put sinew on sinew. I will put flesh upon them. My breath will come upon them. And they will begin to live. In the name of Jesus it is written. That the eggs is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that do it therein. Therefore it is written Nigeria you will do well. Do not set your parameters upon its foundation. Who dares to say that you will not do well as a nation. It is written. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Who are thou, O Zerubbabel, that they to stand before the children of God? Father Lord, we thank you. We exalt your name. We give you praise, O God. Thank you for it is written. And we stand on the word, O God. Lord, that we will see your salvation in this land of the living. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we honor and we exalt you. Thank you for the gift of your breath. Thank you for the gift of your word. May you make a difference, O God. And when all is said and done, may all the glory, may all the honor, may all the adoration come to you, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to Pastor Bidemi McMordy. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Well Reveals. We are The Well, an oasis for revival, refreshing, and revealing.